Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of our new uploads. If you'd like more information about the Net Bible Church or how you could donate, please click on the link below. Thank you so much for watching. History book in, in, in all of the universe like this history book. Because this is the only book that talks about the very beginning. Amen. Amen. If you like to read about future plans, you know, people are, are real into a, a, a astrology and, you know, they have psalm readers, <laughs> palm readers, you know, people reading tea leaves, everybody wanting to know what the future holds for them. Amen. But we don't have to go to the world and to the devil to, to find out God's plan. This is a book of the future. Amen? It's not, it's not a book of do's and don'ts. It's a book of history. It's a book of the future. And it's a book of God's promises to his people. Amen? And it's also a book of promises to those that don't receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What a book we have. Thank God that he decided to write down his promises for you and I in 2021 so that we can see them today. Amen? And their promises still hold true because God is not a man that he should lie. What he said he will do, he will absolutely do. We can't even comprehend. Don't you? I love when I hear testimonies of people that had out-of-body experiences and they died and then God gave them back their, their life on this planet. But they talk about when they went to heaven and the things that they saw. I love hearing those stories. I love hearing about home. I love hearing about our home. I love hearing about our homeland. You know, people are like, well, I'm from here and I'm from there. And, you know, people that maybe were never even born in certain countries, you know, they're from there, you know. But the truth of the matter is, if we are born again, children of the living God, heaven is our home. The Bible says the earth is God's footstool <laughs> because heaven is our home. Amen. Say, heaven is my home. And God has made me promises. And first and foremost, the promise of God in me, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what makes us different than the world. Because when we receive God, we receive Christ, we receive revelation, knowledge, understanding of what the truth really is. Hallelujah. The world can't comprehend these things because they have not received the spirit of truth. <laughs> we can't expect people that don't have, the, have truth or know the spirit of truth to understand truth. Amen. They're forever wandering in darkness. But thanks be unto God that we can pray for these, those, wherever they may be, and pray that, they, that their eyes would be opened. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you may go ahead and be seated. And if you could turn the, the heat off, I'm not sure about anybody else. It seems toasty enough. Seems toasty enough in here to me. And everybody said, well, is it toasty enough? Feels toasty enough. We've got to, outside is one temperature. You walk in the front door and the lobby is another temperature. And then you come in here and you're like, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. It's not like that when we get here, though. Hallelujah. Well, we know <clears throat> this is uh, January 3rd of 2021. 2020 is behind us. And, um, you know, everybody's like, thank God that's over. <laughs> We're dragging some of that in with us this year. I mean, as far as the world and the world system, right? But, um, we're dragging a whole lot of miracles that God did last year in with us into this year. They're all, all those miracles God did last year are testimonies of what he's done. Amen? And he's got a lot more in store for, for his people. Hallelujah. And so uh, it's always good. You know, a lot of people make uh, New Year's resolutions. That is... Um, a New Year's resolution is, yeah, I, I'm a, I like to make lists, so I'll make a list, and then I make lists for my lists. I'll make a list of, okay, I gotta go to the P.O. box, don't forget to mail this, get the P.O. mail, 
you know, then it's like go to the bank, you know, make a deposit, you know, or get cash. You know, I go down the list and then it's like, you know, go to Vons, go to Costco, and then I have a Costco list for that list, <laughs> you know? And so um, we, uh, I mean, I'm a list I'm a list person. I don't know if you, and if you are list persons, if, if a lot of times if you don't write it down on the list, you will forget it. And uh, you might remember a couple things, but you might not remember everything. And so I like to say that uh, New Year's resolutions are the leftover ones that you didn't do last year. <laughs> you might have started out in January with the New Year's resolution list of things that you were going to do in your life. And then um, most of them, by the end of January, you don't even remember what they were. <laughs> you just give up. Ah, forget it. I'm not going to do it. So then, uh, then the next year, your New Year's resolutions are the list of things that you made last year that you didn't do. So, um, and let me just say, which is totally fine. It's totally fine. Because this could be the year that you, <laughs> that you make that change. Amen? And... Um, there's a lot of good changes that we can make, and the best changes we can make are like uh, in, in this life are all the changes we make towards the things of God. Amen. And um, but God has a will for us. He actually has a list. <laughs> he has a short list. <laughs> Get on the short list. He has a short list for His people in 2020. 2021. How soon we forget. <laughs> so, how soon I forget. And so, God actually has, um, a, a, he had a New Year's resolution list for us last year, whether we knew it or not. And, um, but he's still going to go at us again this year. <laughs> and he's going to keep going at us with the same list every year until we incorporate these things in our life. And um, is he disappointed? Absolutely not. He loves us with an everlasting love. He can't love you anymore, whether you do the list or not. The list is just what, when we do God's New Year's resolution list, then it incorporates the promises, amen? Because if you do this, then you get that, right? If you jump off a building, you get something broken. If you don't, you stay whole. <laughs> and so a lot of times people look at, the, the list of do's and don'ts. God just wants to take away all our fun. The bottom line is, God wrote this so we don't run out in traffic and get hit and splat. What was that, that game they used to play? Was it a frog that went across the highway? <laughs> and you try to dodge all the cars. And um, so, so anyway, <laughs> Frogger, is that what it's called? <laughs> You know, sometimes we're like Frogger in life, where, where God doesn't want us playing Frogger. He wants us in the car driving down the road. And so, But God has a will for us this year, and it's the same will he had for us last year. And so whatever we didn't incorporate on our list or get accomplished last year, we have another, another year to try to do these things. And, um, and it doesn't, I, like Paul used to say, I don't. Um, I guess I'm taking this off. Is it warm in here or is it just me? <laughs> uh, you know, Paul used to say, I have no problem with reminding you of these things. Actually, in, in 2 Peter, Peter even said, so I will always remind you of these things even though you know them, even though you know them. <laughs> even though you know them. Isn't it funny that we have to re be reminded of things that we already know? Now, if anybody's into any kind of sports, did you know that's what a coach for? You know you have to run with the ball. You know you have to swim. You know if you're, if you're in water polo, you know you have to hit the ball, and you know it needs to go to the net, or you need, need to guard somebody. From, you know what to do in sports, but you have a coach that's standing there constantly reminding you. Or, or letting you know of somebody that is about to overtake you. You know, whether it's football, basketball, there's coaches, you have cheerleaders, you have all these people that are, and think about that, <laughs> the cheerleaders. We have a great cloud of witness that is cheering us on. That's our cheerleaders. We have the word of God that is our coach. Amen. We have pastors, we have ministers in our life, teachers that are, you know, setting down, you know, like when you have 
pregame, you're sitting in the locker room and you're going over all the rules and going over, the, you know, this is how it's going to work and this is the plays we're going to take. You know, so there's a little, lot of different aspects. And even in music, the same thing works. You know, you could know in theory what kind of music is and what the keys are, but then to sit down and actually play them, you have to have a teacher or even if you're watching a video, somebody that's instructing you and telling you what to do, even though you've done it a hundred times, do it a hundred times more. Amen. It's the same thing with the things of God. And the reason all of those things, whether it's sports, you go to school, you learn every subject you learn and they keep hammering at the same thing. Why do we keep hearing about the same things over and over again? Because we have a tendency to forget. <laughs> There's something about human nature that just forgets and needs to be reminded and needs to be encouraged. So, so that's why Peter told him, I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. So in other words, he's like, I'm still going to remind you. They're like, I already heard this. I already know this. I'm actually kind of playing the game. I mean, I know how this works. <laughs> Amen. And, you know, so, so Peter was saying, I don't care if you already know these things. I don't even care if, if you're firmly established in them. I'm going to keep reminding you of them over and over again. Even Paul said it in multiple places. I, I always think it's funny that the, the books of Peter are written by Peter, but the books of Timothy are written by Paul. <laughs> anyway, that was just a side note. And in um, 2 Timothy 2.14... Paul's telling Timothy, keep reminding God's people of these things. What? The things of the word of God, the principles of the word of God. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. So he was reminding, the, remind them. And so it, there's many scriptures if you go throughout the word where God was wanting to remind his people of what to do and what not to do and the benefits of doing the word of God. Amen? There's always benefits of doing something, but there's not much benefit of not. <laughs> so, hallelujah. So going into 2021, we need to go in with a new attitude. And we can change our attitude at any time. It's just us to, to say, you know what? I don't care if at the end of every single year, it seemed like a defeat. I'm still going to start, encourage myself to start with a new attitude. And the new attitude is doing God's will. And just incorporate, this is what I love about God's word. All we have to incorporate is a few simple things. It's not like, okay, now I'm going to go from sitting on the couch to running 10 miles a day. <laughs> Well, you know, one block from the house, you're going to fall flat on your face, and then you're going to go home crying and never try. So what we do is we incorporate the simple things, and then we just incorporate the simple things again. And then we take those simple things and do them again. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. We incorporate these things. And so God wants us to know what his will is. And so, you know, and, and this is... Uh, there's a very specific will for each and every one of us, but there's also a general will that's for all of us. And in doing God's general will that's for all of us that has been written, then the specific things that we want to know, that we're like, why don't we know these things? Because those things come to us when we do the general will of God. Amen. you're like, well, I'm going to church. <laughs> a lot of people can't say that nowadays. But you're like, I'm going to church. Sometimes God wants us to incorporate a little more. You can have flour and sugar, but that does not make a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> you have to have all the right ingredients and make sure that you have, you know, just because you measure everything for your, for your, your cookies and it says you need four, four cups. You've got everything mixed already. Now it says put four cups of flour. And you pull out the flour, you're like, oh, geez, I've only got a cup and a half. Oh, well, I'll just put the cup and a half in. I don't know about you, but those cookies are going to be 
some kind of funky cookie. <laughs> Maybe just eat the dough, because it's not going to turn into a cookie if you try to bake it. It'll run all over the pan. <laughs> cookie bars <laughs> that you can eat with a spoon. <laughs> it's not going to hold up. And so we've got to make sure we have the ingredients, but we have to have the right measure of ingredients according to what God said in his word. And I really believe that's why we have been half-baked. <laughs> we just haven't added enough flour. Usually when you're baking, flour is always the, the number one most ingredient that you're going to have is going to be flour. But some of us are half-baked because we've only added a cup when it says we need four. Well, I thanked God last week once. <laughs> I don't understand. I already thanked him last week. But that's how a lot of Christians act. That's how a lot of Christians talk. Because that's how Christians think. I thanked God once. A couple weeks ago I was thanking him for something. I can't remember now what it was, but I thanked him. <laughs> God wants, to know, wants us to know his will for every day. Amen. So God wants us to know his will. And I'm going to start with the scripture in um, 1 Thessalonians. And 516, such a simple, simple, simple. If we can incorporate just this, it'll totally renovate, change our lives in every aspect. But 1 Thessalonians, Paul wrote, rejoice always. I rejoiced last Sunday. <laughs> it says rejoice always. This means in your day, during your day, we have to rejoice. Always. A bad thing happens. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe this. No, that can't be your go-to. Our, our go-to can't be grumbling and complaining and whining and being all having a bad attitude <laughs> about things. Our first, our first response, we're first responders, our first response should be rejoice because the word says rejoice when? In the good times, the bad times, ups, downs, everything, always, always. Rejoice always. Pray when? Continually. I guess he wanted to use a different word so it didn't seem so mundane because he could have said rejoice always, pray always, give thanks in all circumstances, or give thanks always. Rejoice always and pray always and give thanks always <laughs> in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that God keeps it real, real, real simple. If we could get these ingredients incorporated in our daily life, not the going to church life, <laughs> not the emergency, uh, we got an emergency here, we got an emergency, we need to rejoice, we need to pray, we need to give thanks. Amen. Amen. Not the, not the emergency, but our daily lives that we're rejoicing always, praying continually, and giving thanks in all circumstances for this. This is the will of God. Amen? That means the right amount of sugar, the right amount of flour, and the right amount of butter. We got it all working. Amen? And in Psalms, it says, this is the day the Lord hath made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. And that's in Psalms 118.24 that we should rejoice and be glad in this day. See how God wants us rejoicing and being thankful? Not so much in 2020. <laughs> we got to shake off whatever attitudes got on us or we dragged in from 2019 into 2020. We got to shake all that off. And people, oh, you don't understand my life. No, we don't understand God's word and how God's word and the principles of God's word works totally opposite of the world. The world's going to thank and praise when everything's going right. That's not the system of God. That's not the kingdom of heaven. That's not where we come from. Where we come from, they rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. Amen? Or... Or you could rejoice always, pray always, and give thanks always. 
Always give thanks. Now, let me just say, a lot of times we go through tests and trials and tribulations. The Word of God promises that. But God tells us how to deal with tests and trials and tribulations. He says, give thanks in, not for, not for it. I'm giving praise to you, God, for this sickness. No, we don't praise God for sickness because sickness doesn't come from God. But we can praise him in it. We can praise him during it. You go through a test, a trial, a tribulation. You're like, God, I might not understand anything. I might not understand everything. But this I know, Father God, you are worthy of praise. You are worthy of glory and honor. And I just thank you. I thank you for my life. I thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your word. Just start thinking of things that you should be thankful for instead of all the things that we could be griping with the world about. God wants his children living in his will so the promises will come to us. The problem in the church is we kept going after the promises without doing the will. If you had all the right ingredients and the right amount and follow the recipe, you will get delicious chocolate chip cookies. But if you don't, you won't. <laughs> if we follow God's recipe we will have the God kind of life because we have everything pertaining to life and godliness through our knowledge. When does the knowledge come? When we clear what's going on up here, clear it out, all the grumbling, complaining, and what if, and the fear, and all of these things, and everything, everything that 2020 tried to put on humanity. And all we got to do is do what God says to do. Just rejoice. People are like, what are you rejoicing about? Oh, you don't even know my future. I got a home that's already paid for in heaven where the streets have been paved with gold, where there's no death, no sickness, no lack for anybody. You don't even know what I got coming. Not only is that, God's promised that he's going to take care of me here on this planet. He's promised me healing because by Jesus stripes I was healed. If the devil tries to put something on me, I have the promise of healing. This too shall pass. Amen. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're going through, you get a bad phone call, you get a bad report, you get that thing in the mail. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let me say it again. Rejoice. Amen. Who's, you know, you open that mail and you look at it and you're like, whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. <laughs> And what does he say? He's well able. He is well able. The people of God have got to, in this year, if they've never done it before, learn to trust God's word. Learn to trust God's promise. A lot of Christians don't know what the promises are. They don't know what the word is. We've got to know what God's word is. We've got to know what he said in his word. Amen? Because he has a, a, a recipe um, a, a definition in which we live by, uh, a formula in which we live by in our relationship with him. Amen? You can't, you can't not have a relationship with God if you're rejoicing always. <laughs> if you're praying continually, you're going to walk with God. You know, you hear about these preachers falling and doing all these horrible, horrendous sin. You're like, they and it's been going on for years. You're not, you can't spend time with God and get in sin. Amen? It just doesn't happen. Everybody's like, oh, well, you know, in their weakness. Weakness? When you're a preacher, <laughs> you don't get in sin because you spend time in the presence of God, and he will call you on the wrong heart attitude before you ever get into that sin. <laughs> I have an addiction. <laughs> yeah, an addiction to the world, fame and fortune. We should, when you get in the presence of God, you don't want to sin. You just want to be in the presence of God in his goodness and his glory. Amen? You get in the presence of God. I remember uh, decades ago, decades, 
I was in my 20. I got saved, and the first thing I did is I went back to Catholic Church because that's how I was raised. But in that, I'm just saying this one particular church, I'm not saying anything about it, all churches ever, right? But in that particular church, the, the priest was talking, and I'm thinking, the way he's talking, I thought, he doesn't even believe that Jesus is raised from the dead. I mean, the words are there, but he doesn't know that God's alive. And I thought, I just got to find a church that believes that Jesus is alive. And so I was on the hunt. <laughs> and then I got filled with the Holy Ghost, and I was on another hunt. <laughs> I kept on, we're talking back in the 70s. When most of you can't relate, except for the cool 70s clothes. That's all you can relate to. I, I am talking about looking for where I can be taught about the word. And all I had was my Bible. And, and, and I got discouraged and couldn't find a church and stopped going to church. And so there was months I hadn't been in church in months. And, I, you know, I'd sit down and try to spend time with the word and spend time in prayer with Jesus and he'd say, you need to get in church. And I'm like, I know, I don't know where to go, but maybe next week. <laughs> I would say that like every week. Because it was really hard to spend time with God in the word and knowing that I wasn't in church. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't talk to me about anything except for, you need to go to church. And I would drive by this little church all the time. And every time I drive by, I'm thinking, I, I think they got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> know anything about denominations. I was in my 20s. I'm, I'm like, I think they probably got the Holy Ghost and keep on driving. <laughs> Another day I'd be driving down and there goes that church. I think they got the Holy Ghost. That was the Holy Ghost trying to tell me <laughs> that he operates in that building. <laughs> if you could just get there on Sunday mornings. And so, you know, months would go by and finally every, every week I'd feel, I'd feel worse and worse about it because I just I got less and less wanting to go to church the more I didn't go the less I wanted to go and then all of a sudden I was like okay Lord I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to that church that I think the Holy Ghost is in there and I went to that church and guess what the Holy Ghost was in there I was like oh my gosh he's how did I know that just driving by that building because the same Holy Ghost in that church was in me. He says, I'm in there. I'm over there operating. You need to go on Sunday mornings. And they would teach the Bible. I was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> I, I've been driving by this church for months. <laughs> and voila, <laughs> I just found my church. And then, of course, I ended up moving to another state. And I had a church there. As long as I was in, was in church, as long as I was in church and going to church and regular church, God never dealt with me about it. <laughs> Did you know this? When you're doing what God wants you to do, he never deals with you about it. It's the little things. Did you know that he doesn't give you a list of 50 things to do? It's always one or two things. I want you to stop doing this, and I want you to start doing this. And let me just say, it'll probably be more on the lines of, I want you to start spending more time in prayer. And we're like trying to figure that out. What does that mean? <laughs> I want you to spend more time in prayer. I've been thinking about it. I can't tell you how many times since we started the church that people would come to me and say that God's really been dealing with me about more prayer. I'm like, yeah, that's God. <laughs> I feel like I need to be coming to the church and praying. I was like, sounds like God. <laughs> and months would go by. Years would go by. <laughs> And they would come to me, you know, I really feel, I really feel bad because I feel like God's been dealing with me about, <laughs> it's like, and he's probably not dealing with you about anything else, is he? <laughs> he's waiting, waiting for you to just do that. Isn't God wonderful that he doesn't give us a list? I'm telling you, he doesn't even give us a list of 20 things to do. He, I'm, from walking with God for over 40 years, whenever he's talking to me about incorporating something in my life, it's only, always, always only one or two things. He never gets past two, because he knows my list. I can't do that list if there's three things. <laughs> I have to give me three things to do. God is so wonderful and merciful and kind, and he'll usually say, I just need, I just really want you to get in the word and study the word, meditate on the word. Just start meditating on the word, thinking about the word during the day. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'll, I was thinking maybe I'll start that next month. 
<laughs> God's not giving us a heads up for the future. He's talking to us about what he wants us to do now. And it's, it's rejoice always, not starting next week or when some stimulus check comes in. <laughs> he means rejoice always, like today. Something bad happens, rejoice. It doesn't matter because this too shall pass. Did you notice that 2020 did pass? We didn't get stuck in any Groundhog Day in 2020, though it felt like Groundhog Day every day. Amen? He wants us to rejoice always. And in, in, in even in when he says that we should rejoice always, amen, rejoice always, rejoice always, pray continually and give thanks. This is the will of God. How simple could it possibly be to just try and be happy? <laughs> now let me just say, he doesn't say when you have something to rejoice, rejoice. And he doesn't say pray if you find something that you're in dire need of. And he doesn't say thank me when something good happens. These are things we always do. No matter what it looks like, no matter what the report is, no matter how we feel. You can lay there feeling like a junkyard dog and you can rejoice always. You can pray continually and you can give thanks to God. I know these things because I've done them. I've, I've felt horrible physically. Not even You don't even want to get up. You just want to be sleep it off, sleep it off. Anybody ever been there? I just want to sleep this off. You know, when you're, you've done everything you know to do, I just thank you, Father God, for your word. I thank you that by Jesus' stripes I'm healed. Satan, I just take authority over the name of Jesus, and you still feel like a junkyard dog. It's a good time to thank God that this too shall pass. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so Paul, I love this, Paul learned something. Paul learned something about praying because the will of God is incorporated and infused in every area of our lives. We read the, we're reading the word of God. Rejoice that you have the word to read. There are nations that don't have Bibles where there's no Bible written in their language. <laughs> how many Bibles do we have? How many different translations? Rejoice that you have a Bible to read. Rejoice that you have, it's in your language. Amen? <clears throat> but, but Paul would say, infusing thankfulness, and, and he said this in many places. I'm just going to give you a few examples. He said in Ephesians 1, 6, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. In Colossians 1, 3, he said, we always thank God the Father, our, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. In, he told Thessalonians, we always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. He was thanking God always. You think of, he'd think about somebody, oh God, I just thank you for them. In Jesus' name, I just thank you, Father, for their faith. I thank you, Father, for their love. I thank you, Father God, that you reveal yourself. I thank you, Father God, that you open the eyes and their understanding. I thank you, Father God, you give them wisdom. Thank you for revelation. Thank you, Lord God. He was always praying with thanksgiving. <laughs> Taking care of two birds with one stone. <laughs> Hear what I'm saying? If we pray with thanksgiving, we've already taken care of two birds with one stone because we're praying continually and always giving thanks. Get in the habit of thanking God, thanking God for his word, thanking God for his promise, thanking God for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen? If we have a new attitude of gratitude, incorporating not just on the good days, but it becoming a part of our life. We're talking about our 2021 resolution. If we could scrap all the things you know, you know, we got this list of stuff that we want changed in our life. But if we can incorporate what God wants us to change, everything else will line up. It's really hard when you're kind of oppressed or you're sad 
you're not happy, you're in fear. Whenever we get under the oppression of the devil, it's really hard to have the God kind of life. But God wants us because Jesus died on the cross and he suffered so that we can have the God kind of life here and now. And we refuse it because we refuse to do the simple things he asks, which is to rejoice. Well, when I get something to rejoice about, I'll start rejoicing. We have heaven in our future. We got something to rejoice about because this too shall pass. Amen. So Paul, every church he wrote a letter to, he always said he thanked God for them. He thanked God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God that even if you're laying there in pain, that you can rejoice because you know that your future is in the hands of your father. If you were to die, it'll be the best thing that could ever happen in this life. The moment a Christian dies, is their best day in this life. I said, the day a born-again child of the living God. Didn't, let me just say, nobody gets out of this alive. Sinner or saint, nobody's getting out of this life alive. Nobody's taking their flesh into the future. Nobody. Amen? It's It's... This life is going to pass for every single human being, some sooner than others. It's not about that. It's about what we're going to do right now because we're living forever. I'm not talking, our flesh is going to pass. Our flesh is going to die, but our spirits are going to live on forever. Amen? Amen. Wouldn't it be good to be practiced up when you hit those streets of gold? <laughs> you just go from rejoicing here to rejoicing there. Amen? You just go from thanking God here to thanking God there. Some people are going to get there. In the, they've been living in the mully grubs and sad and worried and freaked out and, and complaining for so long here. They're going to get there and they're going to be shaken, rattled, and rolled. <laughs> I've heard some stories of people that were not living for God and they got to heaven and some of the things that they went through. <laughs> it wasn't a pretty sight when they first got there. They had to get cleaned up. Amen. How many of you want a New Year's resolution from God this year? Amen. Well, there it is. How simple is that? Rejoice always. Pray continually. That means day in and day out. At night, before you go to bed, in the morning when you get up, and all during the day. You spend moments here and there. It's like, well, I just don't have an hour. <clears throat> we all have an hour. It might be 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there, 20 minutes here, maybe an hour before you go to bed. You, you know, you, we all have time because the Word of God says pray continually. So that must mean that we have time to pray. If we don't have time to pray, we's doing something we're not supposed to be doing. <laughs> because we need time to pray. Amen? If you, want, if you want to see this year turn around, then incorporate God's will for your life in your life. Amen? And even if last year you think, you know, last year because of the situation, I prayed more than I ever did in any year before. I was praying more because I just had more time. I was praying more and I was... I was thank. I found myself thanking God more. Well, then all the more this year. We take what we learned last year and we bring it into this year. Amen. And then we get proficient. Amen. We can pray, but how many of you know you can get more proficient in your prayers? What does that mean? Praying so well that you are seeing the answers. Don't you hate when you pray and pray and pray and you're like, I'm not seeing anything from my prayers. Let me just say, this is a year of seeing our prayers come to pass. Things that you prayed for last year and that you almost in your heart kind of quit and gave up on and didn't understand what was going on, we'll, we will see the answers this year. Amen. Now remember what the Bible says. 
along with them, persecution. But remember this. We can let persecution roll off of our backs like water off a duck's back. You get attacked. <laughs> what does a persecution have on us? Absolutely nothing. Persecution didn't stop Jesus. We're not going to let it stop us. Let the fools say what they want. Let fools just say and do whatever they want. If we haven't learned that by now, let's learn that now. There's a lot of fools running out there. Fools are people that say in their heart there is no God. Or they're agnostics. Well, there could be a God just in case. These are people that even pray. I don't know what or who they're praying to, but they're not children of God. Oh, I'm going to pray for you. Oh, save that. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Hold back. <laughs> Keep that to yourself. <laughs> I hate when, a not, when somebody that's not a Christian says they're going to pray for me. Oh, don't. Please. That's okay. <laughs> I don't say that. I just walk away. <laughs> I don't know who they're talking to. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking to about me when you're praying. Amen? The children of the living God lifting up each other in prayer with thanksgiving to God. Amen? It's an easy way to start out a year by keeping it simple. And let me just say, those natural things on your list that you know that would be better for you, you know, we all got things that we want to have see change, just naturally speaking. When we do this, those things are just going to come to pass. God's going to take care of those. And because why? Our desires will change. The reason we couldn't accomplish last year, <laughs> last year's to-do list, last year's list that we wanted to change was because we didn't change this. It, we, the desire, you know, you can have the desire to, uh, you know, maybe be a certain way and work out or make so much money or, you know, have a desire to have your family. In a, you know, there's all these desires that we want, you know, but they're really on the back burner. It's not the front burner desires. The front burner desires are those things that you just do because you so desire it that it's part of your life. I'm talking about the back burner desires. You all know what I'm talking about. You know, I know I should do this, but <laughs> that's the back burner. You know, you wish it would just happen. But when we do God's desires and plans for us, then those other desires will change, and some of those back burner desires will come up to the front burner. That means the things you got on the low simmer in the back that you don't touch or do anything about, They'll come up front, and all of a sudden, you're like, something changed. So, what changed? What changed? Something changed. Something changed. I don't know how this changed, but <laughs> I've been trying to change this for years, and now it changed because we've got the will of God in front of our plan and purpose and our wills and desires. Because this is the will of God. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstance. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Mark it down. <laughs> Make that your list, and in one month, you can look back and see how much has, God has changed in your life just by that. Amen? Amen. It'll happen. There's going to be a year of miracles. Not because of us, because, you know, anybody's so cute or anybody's so smart or anybody's so spiritual, but because God is so good, and, and, and it's time. Amen? Hallelujah. Did you get anything? We're going to keep it simple and just rejoice always. Pray continually. Amen. Be quicker to pray. Be quicker to pray instead of complain. Be quicker to pray instead of worry and, and being in fear. Amen. And give thanks in all circumstances. Amen. In it. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. <clears throat> I'm glad you were here. I'm glad I was here. Did anybody get anything? They feel like they're armed for the 2021? Keep it simple. Just do those three things every day, and in 30 days, you will see some turning around, and you're like, oh, I can't believe that's all it was. <laughs> that I was griping always, moaning and complaining continually, <laughs> and griping 
in all circumstances. <laughs> that was my problem. And now I'm going to do it God's way, and we're going to have, when we do it God's way, we get the God kind of life. <clears throat> Amen?